<clears throat> Hello, it's, whoops, let me get myself rearranged here. Hi, it's Diva Carla, Cosmic Crone, and guess what time it is? It's full moon time. So I just popped in while my dinner is finishing cooking to, um, to give you the full moon divine feminine astrology reading. Uh, I, this is kind of an experiment because we have a monstrous ice storm here in Maine and this afternoon my internet was slow and I don't know for sure how well we're going to do but um, I'll give it a try and uh, so far it seems to be good. It's not complete. The uh, internet usually tells me if it doesn't like the connection. So what's going on? Moon, 20 degrees Leo the sign of the lion, the sign of the child, the sign of the sun. And the sun, 20 degrees Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of the collective, the um, greater consciousness, the um, social responsibility, what is good for everyone. So the sun is there, shining a light on a, an energy that really does seek the greater good. And, oh, it's interesting. I just saw this. The sun is trine Juno in Libra. Libra, the sign of relationship, of balance. And Juno, the planet of social justice. So, in spite of everything going on in the world, or maybe because of it, the sun and Juno and the moon are all having a conversation about social justice. What is good for women and children is good for the world. So that sets the stage. What else is going on up there in the sky? Well, one thing that I noticed immediately, two things I noticed. The first thing, the very first thing I noticed was Hecate rising. She is, um, oh, about 15 minutes, less you know, a quarter of a degree off of the rising sign on the 12th house side. So that means that she's just coming to the horizon, hasn't quite risen yet. Hecate the crone, the crone at the crossroads, the um, one of the most ancient divinities in any pantheon, certainly in any Eurocentric pantheon of um, god archetypes and goddess archetypes. So it's almost as if she's got her finger on this chart saying, my wisdom, my truth, my ruthlessness, my relentlessness is in charge here. And yes, there's a shit show in Capricorn and um, interesting squares happening be between what's going on in Capricorn and what's going on in Aries. That's the first, anyway, Hecate is the first thing that I noticed. We'll, we'll go to the other places later. So the crone, the, the crone and crone ris, wisdom is, you know, got her finger on the pulse of what's going on here. And if you honor her, she will help you. But you, but you have to honor her. You cannot ignore her, dismiss her or put her out to pasture, or kill her off, or pretend she doesn't matter. You can only receive her benefit and her wisdom if you bring her food and leave her an offering. You have to know that she's got what you need. The second thing I noticed is a triple conjunction at the... Um, uh, it's not the descendant, if it's the midheaven and the bottom. <laughs> Hi. I saw a little like fly up, but I can't see who's here. Hi. Whoever you are, welcome. Um, a trip, I can't believe it, my mind. I've been, I've actually been in bed all day. Um, 
I am needing to catch up on rest today for some reason. This, and I'm hearing that for a lot of people. I think what's been going on on the world stage, which includes my nation of the United States right now in a most alarming way, and also China, and um, I, I think a lot of us would like to curl up and sleep through this full moon, and, and maybe that's a good idea. If you can, get more rest. We need it right now. This is, in spite of Leo being an out there sign, gregarious, and, and Aquarius being about the collective, this is still very close to Embolk. The Embolk was last weekend. And in fact, the cross quarter wasn't until, the astronomical cross quarter wasn't until Tuesday. So we, we need to come out of our hibernation slowly and mindfully. Uh, that will do the world more good than coming out gangbusters and then falling flat on your face with illness or fatigue. Um, we've, got, we've got a big job ahead of us. So uh, self-care, self-love is incredibly important in order to stay with the program and make sure you show up when it really counts. Um, so I never said the triple conjunction. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. I almost, oh my, you know what it looks like? It looks like what I'm calling the Goddess Rules show that happened on Sunday during a certain sporting event. I don't like calling it Super Bowl halftime show because it's so much bigger than that. The Goddess Rules show with Shakira and J-Lo. How about today... Uh, t it started today. It's already happening now, and it's continuing through the full moon, which is um, in the wee hours of Sunday morning, 2.33 a.m. at my house. Um, Black Moon Lilith and Venus are conjunct. So if you have a clear sky over the next couple of days and you go out at sunset and see a brilliant bright planet in the sky that's Venus and she and Black Moon Lilith are in an almost exact conjunction in fact um, by, to, by Sunday evening they probably will be Sunday Monday evening they, they will both be there together now you can't see Black Moon Lilith because for one thing she doesn't she's not a physical object she's a mathematical point that describes the moon's orbit, and I won't go into that. I don't even know how to explain it. I just know what she stands for as an archetype, and she is the universal feminine that has the power and the intention to come through the vortex as form and bring shape, to exist as atoms and molecules and things, be they... Um, mushrooms are galaxies and everything in between. So she is the ultimate feminine creative principle. And then Venus is, is in some ways her more embodied avatar, the bright and shining beautiful one who stands for the queen of heaven, Inanna, Isis. Um, she has always stood for the great goddess, the divine feminine in her brilliance. And these two are together with Chiron, Chiron, the mentor, the healer. Uh, this, this is a very strong, very good, very healing, very balancing converse, uh, not conversation, conjunction. And yeah, they're holding, they're holding the space down at the bottom of the chart. Um, I'm not seeing really um, strong con uh, other aspects. They are they are square folus. Fol that's that's pretty intense because folus, folus and Chiron are square right now. Folus is at three forty four Capricorn, and he stands for he's he's a couple of things, and and people don't talk about this part very much. He's the um, 
the shaman of the gods. He holds ritual space for the gods. And he's also a very flawed entity. He, um, he caused big trouble. In fact, he caused Chiron's wound. He, he created or generated the war, the big fight that caused Chiron to become what we know as the wounded healer and the wound that Chiron could not heal. So Pholus stands for, ah, it, this won't hurt anything to, holy crap, I practically destroyed the world. And so he's there in an exact trine to Uranus, who stands for what comes out of left field, uh, explosive and sudden change. Uh, if Uranus is an earthquake, then Pholus is the fuse on a stick of dynamite, and the two of them together. It can feel incredibly intense. It means change seems to roll over us without stopping. It's thunder and lightning. And that's happening in the background. This has been going on for a while. Pholus and Uranus are going to be in this trine, this flow, um, augmenting each other. And uh, square, Pholus is square, Chiron. So it's kind of like if Chiron were, were, if it were happening now, what Pholus is potentially unleashing could injure Chiron all over again, could generate this, this deep wounding of the wisdom, the healing, the balance, the logic that sustains life. And yet Chiron is not alone. He has got two of the most powerful feminine avatars of the, uh, or uh, archetypes of the uh, Zodiac right there with him, Black Moon, Lilith, and Venus. So that's, that's pretty important, and that's holding the space for all of us. What else do I see here? There is an extraordinary... Um, it, it's actually... Well, it's almost a grand square. It's, it's pretty darn close to a grand, a, a, car, a grand cardinal square. Let me take it in pieces. Pluto and Saturn have completed their conjunctions. Saturn is separating, but they're still strong enough and powerful enough that it's still active. So at the time of the full moon, Saturn is at 2559. Uh, Capricorn and Cariclo, the feminine healer, um, Chiron's counterpart, his, his consort, in fact, she is right there with Saturn. They are a quarter of a degree apart themselves, and or about half a degree. And Saturn is in an exact opposition to Magdalena over in Cancer. Magdalena is feminine Christ consciousness. She is the consort of the one we call Jesus the Christ. Um, so what is this? They are holding each other in this exquisite projection. Saturn holding form, holding rule of law, and, um, and holding the establishment, the establishment religion, the establishment government right there in Capricorn. And Magdalena is standing for everything that is the opposite of that. She is standing for the truth the establishment seeks to bury the truth that the establishment fears would bring it down, even though I don't believe that's true. I, I'm, st I'm still working on it. I, I, um, around Christmas time, my Christmas present to myself was um, Magdalene Revealed, Mary Magdalene Revealed by Megan Watterson. And it's, it's a very good book, and it tells a lot about 
Magdalene, things I never knew. I never, I never knew until I opened that book that there was a gospel of Mary Magdalene. I knew about the Gnostic gospels who spoke of her differently than the gospels in the uh, Judeo Christ, well, Christian Bible. But I didn't know that she had her own book and she carried her own teachings that she received secretly, heart to heart from Yeshua, the man she loved and walked with one way or another. So she represents the feminine carrying those teachings and, and I am still sorting out how the next 2000 years would have been different if people had embraced her teachings rather than suppress them. It's, it's hard to know if everything that happened would have happened the same way, but surely some things would have been different. So they are opposite each other and they are each square, Eris in Aries and Juno in Libra. Eris in Aries, Eris, um, Eris is a very slow moving outer planet. Um, and most everybody who's alive has Eris in Aries. She's, uh, I think it's 125 or 30 years that she, it takes her to move through the sign of Aries. Uh, and she's only two, barely two thirds of the way through. Uh, she stand, she's a goddess of discord and she has been in a square to Pluto for years and that will continue for a while. Um, so that's active right now. She is literally, they're both at, the, at 23 of their respective signs. The goddess of discord who is seeding. Uh, if Pluto is sex, death, and transformation, especially the death and transformation part. Eris is kind of like, let me make sure that happens because she will pull the rug out from under you. You see, it's so funny. Saturn and the establishment hanging out in Capricorn may be frightened of Mary Magdalene across the sky but the one they need to be afraid of is the one who kind of looks like them because the establishment is working by sowing discord right now and Eris is sowing discord. But I don't believe she's on their side. I've always seen people like um, Alexandria Octavia Cortez as heiress, the upstart women who showed up in Congress after the 2018 election. Um, and there's more to come. And maybe, maybe heiress is neutral. Maybe she doesn't care who wins as long as she gets her attention. So maybe she's working for both sides. I say, let's, let, let's definitely use her energy and let us not fear her energy. Let us certainly use whatever she will let us have. Let her, let's use it. Let's grab it. Discord. Unbalancing our belief that the world is sane. Because, you know, we have so much of what we have, our sense of security, our sense of safety and belonging, and that is you know, mostly true for white people, you know, a hundred times, thousand times more true for white people than for anyone else of color. We have to allow heiress. My, my electricity just blinked. Maybe you saw that. I might lose everything. Sometimes it blinks before it goes away. So I'll complete this right now. We are, uh, heiress is opposite Juno. Juno stands for social justice, the divine marriage, the appropriate and sacred union of masculine and feminine, the balance. She's in Libra. I think she's very much at home at Libra, in Libra, and she is communicating 
part of this um, trine with the sun in Aquarius saying, I am at work. I am at work no matter what it looks like. You see the injustice. You see the outrage. Well, stand up and fight. Stand up and do. Oh, and take care of yourself while you're at it. I opened this up saying how so many of us are feeling incredibly tired. This full moon is has such outgoing energy and most of us are like, ah, oh, no, pull the cover up over our heads. Um... So all of this, this is active and it's true and you may get, I have an opportunity to change the world. I'm, I'm opening the doors to my program tomorrow, Sex, sex After Menopause. Um, and there's, it's not even open and there's a couple of people already in it because they snuck in. Um, so, you know, we're all... Just take sleep extra, do what is necessary and no more. Um, withhold social events if you feel too tired. Um, do, do this, this um, full moon ceremony, do it on your own in quiet and you know, self, self-care rather than necessarily a big, loud, um, raucous ceremony with the public. Okay, just in case, since I, it could be all over, let me go get my dinner out before uh, the Instapot locks itself. And thank you for being here. I, I've seen some people come on, um, but I don't, uh, I can't see your names or who you are. So I'm glad you're here. I hope you got something out of this. And I wish you very brilliant blessings of this full moon. And if you're in a wild weather area of the world, you know, stay safe and take good care. Bye.